All praise is due to Allah. He is the one who possesses complete perfection. I affirm his magnificence and greatness. He alone is in full control of all events and circumstances. He is the most exalted and glorious. He sent the Quran down to his messenger so as to make him a conveyor of glad tidings, a warner, a caller to Allah by his permission, and a shining light of guidance. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partner, and I bear witness that Muhammad is Allah's worshipping servant and messenger. He was the most immaculate of Allah's creation. He is the leader of Allah's messengers, and he will be the leader of those whose bodies will be radiant on the day of resurrection due to the traces of performing wudu in this world. May Allah grant an abundance of his commendation and protection to his messenger, as well as to the messenger's pure family, his wives who were the mothers of the people of Iman, his esteemed companions, and all who continue to follow their path until the day of recompense. Servants of Allah, observe taqwa of Allah for as long as you still have the chance to continue doing so. Time is quick to elapse and slow to return. Do not be distracted from the endless hereafter by this temporary world. What you have in this world will end, while what Allah has for you in the hereafter is everlasting, and the best final outcome will be for those who observe taqwa. Servants of Allah, the constant cycle of night and day undoubtedly confirms to us how swiftly time passes. Some of us may find it so fast that a month might seem like a week, a week like a day, or perhaps an entire year like a mere month. Something that we know from our religion is that increased swiftness in the passing of time is among the signs of the final hour. This fact was authentically narrated from our Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, who spoke the truth and received revelation that was the truth. Servants of Allah, all of this should prompt those who are perceptive and discerning to awaken so that they do what is correct, repent sincerely, and avoid what is blameworthy. Allah is the one who causes the night and day to alternate for those who wish to take heed or wish to be grateful to Allah. Servants of Allah, perpetrating sins is reprehensible. And it is all the more worse to do that after having performed righteous deeds. Although righteous deeds are a cause for sins to be pardoned, persisting in committing sins hinders the performance of righteous deeds. The Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, used to seek refuge from having little after having much. Furthermore, Allah instructed his servants, do not be like a woman who weaves and then unravels what she had tightly woven. Therefore, servants of Allah, when someone regresses after completion or returns to sins after having left them, he is indeed among those who have spoiled for themselves the triumph of obeying Allah. Even if he makes himself feel content with some relatively sparse acts of worship performed at a few times of the year, those acts will remain in their places and not extend to others. That is to say nothing of the fact that such a person might be completely devoid of feeling any enjoyment or solace with Allah during his acts of worship because of intending to return to what he was doing prior to obeying Allah. I say to every servant of Allah, consider the fact that during Ramadan, you must have tasted at least some part of what it means to worship Allah. Therefore, you should not ever contaminate that with anything that pollutes it. You should continue to sincerely worship Allah, even if by something relatively little. What matters is how something is done, not merely how much of it is done. Allah, who is perfect in every way, said that He created life and death in order to examine which of you is best in deeds. He did not say to examine which of you performs the most deeds. By Allah's permission, consistently performing deeds that may seem small protects a person from regression after a time of vigor. Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant commendation and protection, said, You must perform the deeds which you are able to perform. I swear that Allah does not become fatigued, whereas you are the ones who become fatigued. The most beloved part of a person's religious practice to Allah is what the person does consistently. This is collected by Muslim. 
servants of Allah, the individual who follows some goddess is the one who continues to obey Allah in all circumstances. He worships Allah whether standing, walking, sitting, or lying down. He knows his creator whether it is Ramadan, Shawwal, or any other month of the year. He will be asked about his deeds at all times without any being excluded. The months of a year make up a person's life which elapses and he is undoubtedly accountable for all that he does throughout them. Our Prophet may Allah grant him commendation and protection who spoke the truth and received revelation which was the truth said the two feet of each person will not move on the day of resurrection until he is asked about four things and among them he mentioned his life and how he spent it. This is collected by Ibn Majah. Therefore, a soundly guided servant of Allah does not think that worship is specific to certain months and not others. He recognizes that Allah is his Lord during Ramadan, during Shawwal, and during all other months as well. Along with that, a soundly guided individual realizes that although some occasions for worshiping Allah have more virtue than others, they remain continuous and are not disconnected. It is compounded ignorance for a person to deceive himself into thinking that Ramadan is a month which is an exception and it serves as a break between committing sins before it and then returning to sins after it. Such a perspective reflects ignorance, deviance, and lack of understanding. A soundly God individual recognizes that the happiness which Allah prescribed for him on Eid is an act of worship just as the fasting that was subscribed for him is an act of worship. Additionally, although various acts of worship come together all at once during Ramadan, so as to let a person combine between adorning himself with obedience to Allah while purifying himself from disobedience, one can still find those acts of worship dispersed for him throughout the remaining months of the year. Therefore, what is there that prevents him from fasting in Shawwal on Mondays and Thursdays or on the middle three days of the month? What is there that prevents him in Shawwal from giving charity, engaging in dhikr, or reading the Qur'an? Ask the same thing for all other months of the year as well. Additionally, our Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, specified Shawwal as a month in which six of his days should be fasted. It is authentically narrated from him that he said, if someone fasts Ramadan and then follows it with six days during Shawwal, it will be as though he fasted the entire year. This is collected by Muslim. Servants of Allah, that results from the fact that a person is rewarded tenfold for a righteous deed. Therefore, the reward for the month of Ramadan would be like that of ten months. The reward for six days of Shawwal would be like that of sixty days. And the total of those is twelve months, which is a complete year. Furthermore, part of Allah's mercy to His worshipping servants is that although He prohibited them, from consecutively fasting every day of the year, as mentioned in an authentically narrated hadith, he still gave them the opportunity to attain the reward of fasting the entire year by way of Ramadan and the six of Shawwal. In that way, they can attain the reward of fasting the full year without doing anything prohibited. That is Allah's bounty which he grants to whomever he wills, and Allah is the owner of infinite bounty. The month of Shawwal has certain unique features. It is the first of Ashur and Ma'lumat, the well-known months referred to in the Qur'an during which the time for performing Umrah as part of Hajj begins. The well-known months refer to Shawwal, the Qa'dah, and the first 10 days of the Hijjah. Shawwal also has the unique features of containing Eid al-Fitr and being a month in which it is prescribed to fast six of its days. Servants of Allah, in short, a Muslim is to be engaged in worship of Allah throughout all circumstances, even regarding a morsel that he puts in the mouth of his spouse. Furthermore, there is nothing more effective in wiping away sins than Tawheed, sincerely devoting all worship to Allah, and then performing as many righteous deeds as possible, which can be added to one's record. Allah said, continue to establish prayers prescribed at the two ends of the day and in some hours of the night. Righteous deeds certainly wipe away sins. That is an admonition for those who take heed. May Allah bless us all by the Qur'an and Sunnah and now simply benefit from the ayah and wisdom they contain. I say this much and I implore Allah to forgive me, you and all Muslim men and women for every misdeed. Thus seek forgiveness from Allah and repent to Him as my Lord is certainly most forgiving, the bestower of mercy. All praises due to Allah, the Lord of all creation, and may He grant commendation and protection to the most noble of all the prophets and messengers. The best speech is the Book of Allah. 
and the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad, may Allah grant him commendation and protection. The worst of things are those which are invented and then claimed to be part of Islam. Every such invention is considered bid'ah and every bid'ah is misguidance. You must also remain with the jama'ah, the collective of Muslims who adheres to what is correct because the hand of Allah is over the jama'ah. If someone breaks away from it, doing so will take him to the hellfire. Servants of Allah continue to observe taqwa of Allah. In addition, realize that if anyone had worshipped Ramadan, then Ramadan has now passed. But if anyone had worshipped Allah, then Allah is ever living and he never passes away. The truly intelligent individual is the one who takes account of himself and works for what lies ahead after death, whereas the incapable individual is the one who follows his own disobedient inclinations and fills himself with false hopes about Allah. A person should not ever waste his life doing things that his Lord is not pleased with. He should also not ever miss any chance to do what is correct throughout all months of the year, and he must ask Allah to assist him in doing that. In a well-known supplication of the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, he would pray to Allah, saying, I beseech you to make life a source of more good for me. Doing good things is not confined to Ramadan. Rather, good things can be done at all times. And that is what a person should seek to do in compliance with the command of his Lord, the Almighty and Most Exalted. Continue to worship your Lord until the certainty of death comes to you. Hence, the only thing that ends a person's chance to draw near to his Lord is death. Therefore, servants of Allah, strive your utmost to continue obeying Allah, the Most Majestic, and seeking out what pleases Him. Additionally, beware of laziness when it comes to acts of goodness and kindness, and as it relates to persevering and doing those things. Indeed, it is only those who patiently persevere that will be granted a measurable reward. So long as you still have the chance, do not fall short in seizing whatever opportunity you can to please Allah. Do not let money progeny or celebrations divert you from obeying your Lord. The end of a person's life can come suddenly. Being held to account is a difficult thing and it will be too late for sorrow and remorse at that time. People of Iman, do not let your properties or your children divert you from the remembrance of Allah. Those who allow that to happen are the ones who will suffer loss and give from what we have provided you with before death comes to one of you and he then says, My Lord, if you would only give me respite for just a little while, I would give in charity and be among the righteous. Allah grants respite to none when his appointed time comes and Allah is completely acquainted with everything that you do. May Allah have mercy upon all of you. In conclusion, invoke Allah to grant his commendation and protection to the best of all creation, Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Allah instructed us to do so. He mentioned himself first, then mentioned his angels who proclaim his perfection, and then addressed you, the people of Iman, where he said, people of Iman, invoke Allah to grant the Prophet commendation and to grant him protection as well. O Allah, grant your commendation, protection, and blessings to your messenger Muhammad. O Allah, be pleased with his four successors, Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, and Ali, as well as all of the companions and those who continue to follow their path until the day of recompense. O Allah, be pleased with us along with them by your pardon, favor, and kindness. O Allah, grant strength to Islam and the Muslims. O Allah, grant strength to Islam and the Muslims and we can shirk in those who perpetrate it. O Allah, grant victory to your religion, your book, the son of your prophet, and your believing worshiping servants. O Allah, relieve the distress and suffering of the Muslims who are afflicted. Settle the debts of those who are in debt and heal our ill and all the ailing Muslims. We ask you this by your mercy, for you are the most merciful. O Allah, Lord of all creation, grant us safety and security in our nations. Make our authorities and leaders people who are righteous and make them among those who fear you, observe taqwa of you and do what pleases you. O oh Allah, the ever-living, self-sufficient, sustainer of all, guide our leader to the words and deeds which you love and are pleased with. O oh Allah, owner of all majesty and kindness, guide his aides and advisors and make them righteous individuals. O oh Allah, direct his deputy to do all that will be best for your servants and their lands. O oh Allah, rectify the conditions of Muslims in all places. O oh Allah, rectify the conditions of Muslims in all places. O oh Allah, we call upon you to support our brothers who are downtrodden in all places. O oh Allah, rectify for us 
matters of our religion, which protect us from disobeying you, rectify for us the affairs of this world in which our livelihood is contained, rectify for us the affairs of the hereafter to which we will finally return and make life a source of increased good for us. O oh Allah, forgive the people of Iman and Islam, male and female alike, you are the one who answers our prayers. O oh Allah, we call upon you to make the occasions that you bless us with sources of us earning your reward. Our Lord, grant us good in this world, grant us good in the hereafter, and protect us from the torment of the hellfire. Our Lord is perfect in every way. He grants protection to all of his messengers. And the last of our prayers is that all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all creation.